Welcome to Mom's. I'm going to look at this little mini sewing machine. We're going to do an overview of it and then I'll show you how to get started operating it. Now the machine I have has HTV Rant on the front. Yours may or may not have that. If it looks like this one, then this is going to help you out. I think sometimes these uh, smaller machine manufacturers, they like license the machines out to different places, so it may have a different brand on it. But anyway, this will work for you. Um, I got this one off of Amazon. I paid $56 on a Prime Day deal. The exact one I bought, and I will drop links to these companies in the description. The one I bought, it's saying out of stock right now. I just checked this morning. But there is another one. Now the other one is $76, so that's $20 more. But it does have a big accessory pack that comes with it, so that would kind of offset. But I'll drop both links and you can kind of have a look at it. This is the box. I've already unboxed it, so if you were looking for an unboxing, well, it's done. Okay, what all do you get with the base model? Now remember, I did not get the accessory pack. So you got the machine, you got one power cord that I've already plugged in, and you got a foot pedal that makes the machine go. Um, you get a buttonhole foot, so you can make some buttonholes. You get four, well you get, actually get six bobbins. These are class 15, it's standard, you can pick these up anywhere. Um, and you can actually replace these with plastic ones if you want to, but they are all fully wound with black and white thread. There are two that are already on the machine. There's four in a little package and one on the thread spool. There's one in the bobbin compartment. You get a needle threader that looks like this. Um, and you get some extra needles like this. If you are wanting to go ahead and buy some extra needles, these are just standard home sewing machine needles. There's only two, well, there's probably more than that, but for the most part, there's two kinds of needles. There's home sewing and there's commercial. The home sewing needles have a flat back and you're not gonna be able to see that on the camera, but one side of the round shaft is flat and the rest of it is round. On commercial needles, they're solid round, they're round all the way. So it's really hard to buy a needle that won't fit this machine. However, the reason there's so many different sizes of needles and kinds is because of the fabric. You pick a needle based on the thread you're going to use and the fabric you're going to use, not the machine that it's going to go in. And I have a, a video about this. I'll drop a link to that in the description as well. You get a booklet that tells you how to operate it. This is a nice 20 page booklet with, you know, quite a few pictures. It's a really actually nice booklet compared to what I've seen lately, even in full size machines. And you get this little base um, extension table. And this is really cool. It has pl a place in it. It's actually got markings. You're probably not going to be able to see that. It's got markings along here that's a measurement guide. And you can also put your accessories in here. This top part will just slide backward a little bit and then it pops off. And then in there, you can put your accessories, okay? Now let me show you how to put the machine on this because it is a little bit different and I'm actually going to come around to the other side of the camera so we can dig into this machine. This extension table attaches a little bit differently from the other machines I've ever had. Usually you go to the front of the machine and you slide it back like that. This one does not. If you notice on your machine, there's some little grooves right here. And in the table, there's some little pegs. See if I can get it to show. Yeah. See the little peg right there? These pegs go in this groove. So you lift the machine up and you lower it right down on the pegs and you have extra room for sewing and here's your measurements. Now when you get ready to store the machine, you can take this back off, turn it around and slide it on there and it's all compact for storage. So that was pretty cool. 
Now, I'm going to leave it off while we work on it because it's a little bit easier to see inside what I'm going to be doing. All right. So, first of all, on the back, here is where you plug in your foot control, and that is this, this one. This other one goes to your power outlet. Now, when you plug this machine in, it's on. Okay, it's already on. So if you press your foot pedal, it's going to start sewing. So just be aware of that. Now let's look down here on this side. This is your light. Press it and it comes on, off, on, off. So you can actually run the machine without the light. Now this toggle switch has one hash mark on the left and two hash marks on the right. These actually run the machine. The machine is on now. It's in the center. It's at the O. It's actually on. This lets you operate the machine without having to press the foot pedal. So if you flick this toggle switch, let me get out of the way. If you flick that, it's going to start sewing. If you go to the back, it's going to sew faster. Okay, so that just lets you sew without having to press the foot pedal. So real quick, let's have a look at the front end. The only thing of note here, it does have a thread cutter, which is actually kind of nice. I use this all the time, and a lot of my big machines don't even have this. So I was really kind of tickled to, to see that. Okay, let's look at some of the other parts. Up here is where your thread goes, and it has a spool cap on it. This is the cap to help hold your thread on. Now, right now, when you get it, it's just got a bobbin on there, but that's okay. This will hold a full spool. You just pull this up, and see a full spool of thread will fit on there now. And I'll put the cap back on there. Um, this is a thread guide, and this is where your bobbin will wind. All right, right here, this is your thread tension. And this knob is numbered 1 through 12. And these are your, this is your stitch selector guide. Let me get the needle up, yeah. If your needle is not up, this won't roll very easily. You don't need to roll it if it's too hard. Okay, so let's have a look at how many stitches come with this machine. Because I don't want you to be misled. It says like 38 stitches. Okay, well... You have a column A, B, and C, and if you notice, all of these stitches are very similar. So let's just look up close at, say, number 9, the zigzag. Do you notice the difference between 9A, 9B, and 9C? It's the same stitch, it's just closer together. Um, so, you know, if you want to call that all different stitches, you can. Now, down here is going to be your settings when you want to make a buttonhole. So, a buttonhole has four pieces. A, down, a left side, a front bar tack, a right side, and a back bar tack. So, here's the different setting for each tack. And if you want to go up the left side, you're going to go to C7. So, C7 looks like that. You would turn this to number 7. Alright, now what about C? Well, down here is A, B, C, D, and this little U-turn thing. Alright, A, and A B, A, B, C, and D, those are your stitch lengths. Stitches have a width and they have a length. Now, width is from side to side. You only have that like on zigzag, well, you have it on everything except a straight stitch. So like for your zigzag stitch, how wide do you want it? Well, that's going to be controlled up here. This is your length. So on a zigzag, it would be how far apart is each peak of the zigzag. That's what's going to set this. So A is a long stitch. You're going to get a zigzag that looks like this. If I move it to B, which is the medium, you're going to get a stitch like that. They're a little bit closer together, but they're still the same width. They're just closer together. And then if you go to C, you're going to get the one that's really, really close together. Now, if you slide this to D, 
You notice that D just has a dot there. That means it's not going to move at all. You would use this when you're uh, like putting on a button and you don't want the fabric to move at all. Notice on your buttonholes, both of your front tack, your front tack and your back tack, they're on a D because you don't want the fabric to move. It's just going to go back and forth, back and forth in the same place. That's what makes that solid bar tack. Now, this right here is your reverse. So when you have it over here, it's going to sew in reverse. And this is pretty cool because it stays in reverse. I have a lot of machines where it's got like a, a button you have to hold down. And if you're not holding it down, it's not in reverse. So if you need to sew in reverse for a length of time, this is pretty handy to have. So there we go. Here's your uh, thread, thread tension. Here's your pattern selector guide. And here is your stitch length guide. Okay, this machine does not have a way to change or to adjust your stitch width other than it's just a set pattern. So, you know, but that, that's pretty common in the lower end machines. Now, let's talk about the parts. This is your presser foot. This is what holds your fabric under there. Right now it's in the up position. This lever right here is what drops it down. So when you get ready to sew, you're going to drop that down. When you're moving fabric or whatever, you're going to raise that up. This lever right here releases the presser foot. If you need to change your foot, you're going to press that and see the foot just fell right off. Now when you get ready to replace your foot, you see that metal bar right there in your foot? You see this little opening right there, that metal bar has to go in the foot. So press your metal foot up and then you will let this down. I don't have enough fingers to do it all at once. Get over here now. So you're going to raise this up, put the foot in place, and then let your presser foot down and it will just snap into place. Okay. As far as the other things, this is called a take-up lever. Oh, this screw right here is what we will use if you want to take the whole foot off. That's the shank and all. And this screw right here will release your needle. And I'll show you how to replace the needle towards the end. Okay, so let's have a look at how to thread this machine. I always like to wind a bobbin first, but we're going to need a spool of thread. This is just a dual, uh, dual purpose thread from Walmart, and this is what we call a stacked thread. Everybody always wants to know what my favorite threads are. So my favorite thread is Aurifil, like this, or Mettler, like this. If you notice, I don't know if you can see with the light, but we'll try. Both of these are what we call cross-wound threads. You see how they make like a V-shaped? They're threaded on a diagonal. Whereas this stacked thread is just stacked right on top of each other. I prefer the cross-wound threads. You choose it by, if you have a vertical spool pin like this one that goes straight up and down, you're supposed to use a stacked thread. If you have a machine that has a spool like this, that's called a horizontal one, then you can use the cross wound threads. But I have a video all about threads and how you can use cross wound on these machines. And I'll be honest with you, I have used, before I knew anything about thread, I have used cross wound threads on a vertical spool and nothing bad happened. But anyway, I'll put a link to that other video down there. So before we get ready to wind the bobbin, we're going to put our spool of thread on here. Make sure you get in the, the center hole there. And we're going to put this back on top. Now, you do want your thread coming off the back of your spool. Okay. Then we're going to go over here to this thread guide. Now this thread guide looks like it has three pieces. 
and there's the top part that looks like a top of a screw. Then there's this little floating disc here that you can actually move. And then there's a bottom disc here. To wind the bobbin, your thread needs to go on top of the center thing, but just under the screw, okay? So come around, you're gonna come around behind it, and you're gonna load that thread just under the top of the screw. Okay, and then head to the right with it. Now, to put it on your bobbin. There's a lot of people do this different ways. Some of them just wrap it a few times, but I have better luck if I thread it through one of these holes. Just like that. And you are just going through one of the holes, not both, just one. It doesn't matter which one. So then snap it onto your spool and you need to press it down. See, you can tell that it sticks up a little bit. You're not gonna hurt it. I mean, don't just jam it, but you know, firmly press it and then pull up the slack in your thread. Now, I like to, um, at this point, you're gonna slide this over, okay? This is what stops it when your spool gets full. So hold your thread up out of the way, not tight, you're just holding it out of the way. And I'm actually going to turn on the toggle switch so I'm not having to press the foot pedal. And I'm just gonna use slow and Now, after you get a few rounds, you can take your scissors and cut that off. Now, I notice that my bobbin is winding heavy on the bottom right now. Sometimes bobbins do this. This is not what you want. And I'll show you the difference. This is a bobbin that wound heavy on the bottom, and this is a bobbin that wound flat. So what can you do? Well, I usually don't mess with this. You can just take your finger while it's winding and you can rotate, you can move it up and down slowly and it will help that. Or, and I actually had to adjust this on this machine. Come over here to this screw with a flathead screwdriver and turn it to your left. And I had to do this one quite a few times I don't know how much screw is in there, but it hasn't come out yet. All right, so that lets your thread go up higher, and then make sure you've got it pressed down as much as you can. This is the one, th one thing about this machine that I've had trouble with, is getting a nice bobbin. So let's see if that helped any. It is much better than it was. It's, I'm still gonna have to work on the adjustment. I have noticed that the faster you go, the better it does. So I would wind it on high speed. Another thing, this machine, the needle is engaged anytime you're winding a bobbin. Some machines, the needle disengages, but just be careful, don't stick your finger under there while you are winding a bobbin. Okay, so this is how you wind the bobbin, and you just keep going until you have a bobbin that is nice and full. And you don't have to fill up a bobbin. You can stop anytime you want to, and even though this one is not nicely wound, I would probably keep going, and you can see the top of it is filling up better now. It'll still sew. So we're gonna cut this off. And now let's see how to put it in the bobbin compartment. So when you get your machine, there's already a bobbin in here. So to take it out, you're just gonna press down slightly on this just to get a grip on it. And that just slides back, the little clear cover. Now you're gonna lift the bobbin out of there and just pull it out. And that's all there is to that. Now we're gonna take a new bobbin and we're just, this is just a drop-in bobbin and you want to drop your bobbin in. You want to have your thread coming off the left side, okay? It's coming down so that if you pulled it, 
like this, you see that's turning in a counterclockwise manner. So we're just going to drop this down in there and then come around here and just lay that thread. My thread is just laying towards the back right there. That's all you have to do. And then you slide your cover back on and the bobbin is in. Now let's look at how to thread the top part. We still have our spool on from when we wound the bobbin, but if you're changing it, you just make sure your thread spool is up as high as it needs to be and put the cap on there. Okay, now you remember when we wound a bobbin, we went underneath the, the screw top, but above the middle, middle ring? Well, this time we're going to go under that. So we're not going just under the screw top. We're going to go all the way under here, okay? Just slip your thread under there and let it drop right down in this channel right here. Now at this point, we need to check some things. Before you get ready to thread your machine, you need to make sure that your needle is in the uppermost position. You're going to turn your hand wheel towards you until it gets in that position. And the way you can look is this take up lever here should be up as high as it goes. So rotate the wheel towards you. You see it moving up? When it stops moving, it's going to start going back down. So once it gets to the top, it's going to hesitate. Stop there. Now you also need to make sure that your presser foot is in the upper position. You don't want it down. You want it up. And that's because this channel right here, where your this is your thread tension guide, where that is, there's little, there's two little tension discs that like snap shut. Well, if the foot is down, those discs are shut, so it's hard sometimes for the thread to lay in there. If you have your foot up, they're open, so it just falls in there. And you can actually see those discs open and shut when you raise the foot up and down. So if you don't have much thread, go ahead and give it a tug so that we have some thread. And we're just going to let it lay right down in there. Now down here, this number two looks like a U-turn. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make a U-turn and we're going to come all the way back up on the other side to here. Now there's a hole in your take-up lever right there and we're going to thread through it from right to left just like this and pull it through carefully and then let it drop right back down in that same channel. Now we're ready to thread this guide and the needle. So you can let your presser foot down and what I have to do, you can rotate that hand wheel a little bit and drop your needle some for a second. It's a little bit easier to get into this hole if you let that down. So get the end of your thread and you're just going to go from top to bottom. Just run that thread right through that hole there and pull it out. Make sure it doesn't get looped around this screw or anything. Then you can raise your needle back up and we're going to thread the needle from front to back. And that's, you can use the needle threader if you want to. I find it easier to just stab it through and then catch that thread on the back and pull it on through. Okay. Now, once again, lift your foot up and we're going to put this to the back. Run it right through the opening in the middle of your presser foot so that it goes to the back as well. So what we have right now, your thread is coming down. It's going through the needle from front to back. It's dropped down in the foot, in the opening in the foot, and it's going out the back. Your bobbin thread over here is coming out of the crack in between the clear um, bobbin cover and the metal plate, and it is also going out towards the back. So you can see my two threads there, one top thread, one bottom thread. Now, I'm going to show you where the bobbin thread needs to go, and I'm going to have to take the foot off to do it. So I'm going to press that up and slide the foot off. 
this hole right here, this is the hole that the needle will go down into. Your bobbin thread needs to be up through this hole. So I'm gonna show you how to do what we call taking up or pulling up the bobbin thread. Hold your needle thread, and I'm gonna pull it over here. This is the thread that's coming out of the needle, and here is my bobbin thread over here. Rotate the hand wheel towards yourself. Watch that needle go down in there. Rotate it, and here it comes up. It just made a sweep around the bobbin. Now, you see the loop that's attached to that thread? That's your bobbin. So catch that loop and pull that bobbin tail out. So now what you have here is you have your bobbin thread coming up out of this hole and you have your needle thread coming out of the needle. Okay, so let me put the foot back on now. Get this out of the way. And I'm gonna slip the foot right back on. I gotta hold that up while I let this down there. Now, our foot is on and our threads are where they should be and I'm gonna pull them right out the back side. Now, we're ready to choose a stitch and put a piece of fabric through here. First, a stitch pattern. Let's go with a straight stitch first. Now, the only difference between stitches one, two, and three is the needle position. Stitch one, the needle should be a little more towards the left. Stitch two, it should be right in the center. And stitch three, it should be a little to the right. So I'm gonna go with stitch two. That's gonna have the needle in the center position. And I'm also gonna choose stitch length B. That's kind of medium, okay? So let's get a little piece of fabric here. And we are going to slide it underneath here. Drop your foot, okay? Now I always like to hold on to my tails just hold them out to the left a little bit. You're not pulling on them, you just keep them from getting sucked back in there during these first couple of stitches. The first thing you wanna do is rotate the hand wheel towards you and let it make a couple of starter stitches and stop with the needle down in the fabric, okay? Then you can either use your toggle switch, I'm gonna to use the foot pedal and we'll just sew a few stitches. And there it goes. Now, if you want to go in reverse, a lot of people like to lock their stitches at the beginning and the end. You slide it all the way to the reverse, all the way to the reverse, and then it's gonna come backwards. Just like that. Then you can go back to where you are and just let it roll. Now when you get to the end of your fabric, you wanna make sure your take up lever is in the uppermost position. Lift your foot up and pull it out. If your fabric feels stuck, it might, it's probably because you don't have this in the uppermost position. That's where it releases the most tension on the thread so you can pull it out. And then you can come right over here to your thread cutter and cut it off. And this is what your stitch looks like. There's thread on both sides, okay? And it's locked in the center. This is called a lock stitch, and that's why you have to have a thread on the bottom and a thread on the top. And let's just have a quick look at one of these decorative stitches. I'll show you how to get to those. So let's do number seven. This is a zigzag stitch. First, make sure that your needle is up and you're gonna roll this all the way to the seven. Sometimes you have to press down a little bit. There we go. Now you get to pick, do you want, and I'll show you the difference. We'll go with A first. So I have that on A, and I'm gonna sew on the wrong side of this fabric so you can see the difference. And we would put that under there. All right, sink it down, and I'm gonna sew a couple of stitches by hand, and then I'm gonna press the foot pedal. Going back and forth now. All right, our needle is raised, so let's just change to B and see what the difference is. 
back down. And then let's go to C. And then I'll show you what D does. It won't move at all. It's just going to go back and forth. Okay? So let me raise the needle up. Cut the thread. Okay? Now, that's going to be the difference in your zigzags. Okay? So this was A, this was B, and this was C, and this was the D. It didn't move at all. But that's all you do to select all these different stitches. You go to the number that you want here, and then you pick the width that you want right there. So before I wrap it all up, I do want to point out that when you have the machine in the base, like for storage, it also creates a free arm. So like if you're trying to do a sleeve or something you need to wrap around here, you can put it in the base and get some clearance underneath here. Now let me show you how to change the needle real quick and you'll be good to go. There's, and please, first of all, when you get ready to change the needle, unplug the machine. Because like I told you, if it's plugged in, it's on. So it's easiest if the needle is in uppermost position. And this little screw right here is going to release the needle. Now what I want you to do before you change a needle is insert a piece of paper or a sticky note or something, a piece of tape, I don't know, over your foot plate. Because when you release this needle, a lot of times it's going to drop. And if it falls down in that hole, it's really hard to get it back out, believe me. So get your needle in the uppermost position, machine is unplugged, foot is down, and I have a paper over the hole. Now turn the screw towards you, and the needle will just loosen up. Let me get it up a little bit more. And we're going to pull it right out. Okay. Now to put a new one in, you're going to need the flat back. See, here's the, the flat part. That's going to go to the back of your needle. And on this one, you do have to poke it through the paper just a little bit. It won't fit if you don't have the, the flat back to the back. If you try to put it into the front, it's not going to go in. Make sure that you have it as far up as it'll go. And then tighten the screw back down. And that is all there is to changing a needle. Now, how often do you need to change them? I change mine about every big project. Like if I do a quilt or something, then I put a new needle in. Um, if one gets bent, you need to change your needles. Um, if you start skipping stitches, like if you see it's not, it's only catching like every third stitch or something, that could be because of a bent needle. So, you know, you probably will want to get extra needles. You might go through them pretty regular. But to check to see if it's bent, you can lay it flat. Well, this piece of paper is not flat. But if you put the flat back on a piece of paper, you'll be able to see, you know, if it's bent better than just eyeballing it. So, but anyway, that is how to change your needle. Well, that was a pretty good lesson on the little mini sewing machine. As for my thoughts, I'm still working on this screw to get that bobbin to wind very nicely, but I'll be honest, I have a lot of expensive machines that still don't wind a beautiful bobbin. You have options. There are pre-wound bobbins that you can buy. There are like six of them for, oh, I don't know, a couple of dollars, and they last forever because they're wound really tightly. You can buy a separate little bobbin winder um, there's some that are like $30. There's, I've got one for my quilting machine that's like $300. So, you know, there's, there's that option. You can wind a bobbin by hand. I mean, you can just sit there and, and wind and wind and wind and wind and wind. That's acceptable. So, I don't call that a deal breaker on a little mini machine. I actually kind of like it. It's very compact. Now, would I want to sew on this for hours and hours? No. And you have to keep in mind, if you get this wanting to make like quilts or curtains or anything big, you've got to consider the space right here under your throat. If you're sewing a quilt, you've got to be able to roll that thing up and get half of it under here at least at some point in time. So that's a thought. 
But if you just have something small, you know, that you want to sew on, or if you're just mending, then this might be a pretty good option. It's very compact. I'm thinking about putting this one in the RV so I can sew when we're on vacation. I don't know if I'd have time to do that, but you know. Um, just beware that when it is plugged in, it's on. Even if the light is not on, the machine will still sew, especially if you hit this toggle switch over here. I mean, I don't think it's a bad machine for the money. You have to understand, what if you sewed, all right, there's 52 weeks in a year if you sewed on this for an hour a week, one hour a week, that would be about a dollar per time. So, you know, cost-wise, it's not all that bad. I think it's a pretty fair machine to learn on. You know, sometimes I wonder because we buy these machines to learn on and we're really not giving ourselves the benefit of the doubt. So if you're trying to learn and you're struggling with this one, please don't give up and think it's all you, you know. You can go to a sewing center or somewhere like that and just test drive one of the higher end machines and see, you know, if it's you or if it's the machine. There's more to putting fabric together than just the machine. There's cutting it, there's, you know, there's just so much more to sewing than just the machine. So don't let that put you off. Um, I have another mini machine I'm fixing to do a tutorial on, and then I'm going to put all my minis together and do a comparison along with a big machine. So if you're interested in seeing some of that, be sure and hit that subscribe button, and I will be back with you shortly. I hope this helped you out. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all back here at Mom's next time.